Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Right? The vanity code for the channel on Roku is Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, up front, <clears throat> I live in a multiracial world. Understand, in my inner circle, right, friends, clients, um, there's a lot of diversity, right, a lot of diversity, right, but right understand and I believe black people watching this video understand what I'm talking about in fact not just black people but I believe other minorities Latinos understand what I'm talking about there's a double standard in life that I believe people who are outside of power right minorities women uh, face Right, um, where you're treated in a way where, oddly enough, while historically you've been outside of power, now somehow you are the one who's supposed to compromise and make concessions. Right? So it's a bit amazing to me. Understand, there are cases where I have a non black client. Right? And I'm representing them in some legal proceeding. And interestingly enough, even though, in my opinion, we have the facts on our side, some people, including the judge, will think that I'm the person <clears throat> who's supposed to compromise. Right? I'm the person who's supposed to give away my advantage. I'm the person who is supposed to make things happen. I'm, I'm the person who's supposed to be grateful to even be able to participate in the proceeding. It's a bit shocking. You've, you've seen it in American history, right? People are mistreated. They're out protesting. And then there's a group out there that believes that somehow the protesters who are protesting injustice are the ones who really should be out compromising, who are really the ones not compromising, who are causing the problem, right? In popular parlance, it's called blaming the victim, right? I have a case right now that's fascinating. I've been in court and the judge has said to me, why hasn't this case settled? And I'm wondering, hey, I'm one party in the case. Why are you looking at me? Right? <laughs> Maybe the case hasn't settled because the other side feels they're entitled to something they're not entitled to. Right? Don't get me wrong. I'll talk with the client when I think we need to settle. But I'm certainly not going to do so simply because I happen to be the black guy in the room, right? I understand the conversation is edgy. I understand it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. I've had people in the past come up to me and say, Dwyer, why do you talk about race? Well, because in the words of Cornell West, race matters. It still matters in America. Well, let's talk about Stephen A. Smith and Floyd Mayweather. Because I believe race matters in this context. Now, let me say this. Right? I was raised in Queens. I know Hollis Queens well. Right? Stephen A. Smith is a guy who I um, have followed his career. I have the utmost respect for him. I have no doubt that Stephen A. Smith speaks his mind. Right? I do follow guys from Queens in general, uh, guys from Brooklyn too, right? LL Cool J, uh, Chris Rock, right? Not that I know these guys, but let's just say I know some of the places where they're from, 
right? And Stephen A. Smith is a guy who, you know, was raised in Queens, right? I root for Stephen A. Smith. But I believe that the current status quo, the current world politic, even with a black president, is so unbalanced that it's easy for even well-meaning commentators, whatever their race, including black guys like Stephen Smith, right, including me, quite frankly, to somehow fall into the trap of expecting the black guy in the room to make concessions. Now let's look at why Floyd Mayweather is not fighting Manny Pacquiao. Right? What I want you to do is to question everything I say. Right? This is an online forum. I would encourage you to use Google, to use Bing, to use whatever your search engine to confirm what I'm about to say. But understand that Floyd Mayweather <clears throat> agreed to fight Manny Pacquiao. Right? The playing field should be level. Right? Regardless of the race of the people involved. Regardless of their backgrounds. The, the playing field should be level. So Floyd agreed to fight Manny Pacquiao. And Floyd wanted drug testing for both of them. Now these days that's not unusual. Right? These days aren't we demanding in team sports, right? Baseball, football, that players be drug tested. Why would that request be considered a big deal in boxing? Especially when the offer Floyd made involved both of them being tested for drugs. Keep in mind, they had agreed on the money. It was a 50-50 split. Floyd wanted drug testing should have been uncontroversial. Understand, if Manny Pacquiao agreed to drug testing, the fight would have happened years ago. He didn't. What we got was a PR campaign where we heard that Pacquiao was nervous about needles. Google it. Look it up. We even heard that Pacquiao believed that you know, having blood removed from him would weaken him. We got every excuse in the book. Now, in a perfect world, you don't blame the black guy for the other guy's excuses, do you? Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. It's so ridiculous that understand at one point, Pacquiao's people said Pacquiao wouldn't fight Floyd unless a new arena was built on the Vegas Strip. Sounds ridiculous. If you question the veracity of what I'm saying, just Google it. So then, of course, time passes. The fight doesn't happen. Now, whether your name's Stephen A. Smith or John Doe, how could you possibly blame Floyd Mayweather? For that fight not happening, when Floyd agreed to an equal split with Manny Pacquiao and wanted a bilateral drug protocol, Floyd's not to blame for that. Well, the world changes. Mayweather's star starts to shine more brightly. Understand, folks, there's only one unbeaten fighter between these two guys. Right? That's Mayweather. So Mayweather really is the guy with the bigger box office. Forget the hype. I don't have to argue over who generates more pay-per-view buys. Because that's something that's tangible. right? You can actually look at the pay-per-view buys of Floyd's fight against Oscar. Understand Manny's never had a fight like that. Never. Understand the concession Floyd was making, even though Manny hadn't proven 
his box office pull to be on par with Floyd's. Floyd was willing to have a 50-50 split of the money. He wanted a drug test. Pacquiao's people refused. Right? Later, Floyd revisits the fight. Floyd picks up the phone, calls Manny Pacquiao, who has never made $40 million for any fight in his career. Floyd offers Manny $40 million to fight him. Folks, let me ask you, if someone calls you and offers you the most money you have ever made for an event, ever, is that person being unfair to you? Is there any fight right now that Manny Pacquiao can take where he would make $40 million? Let me point out too, that when you're offered $40 million and you have contracts with other people, let's say you have a contract with your promoter, out of that $40 million, you can pay your promoter to step aside. You can pay off the people who you have contractual relations with. Keep in mind, when it comes to step-aside money, you would give the money to your promoter. The promoter gets the money without even promoting the fight. So understand here, Floyd Mayweather made a $40 million offer to Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao turned it down. Understand, this is that case where we're blaming the black guy. Why? Because, let's face it, in the history of the United States, that's been trendy. Right? That seems to be acceptable. Now, when Stephen A. Smith is talking about Floyd dodging Manny Pacquiao, give us context, Steve. Okay, talk about how Floyd wanted drug testing, Manny didn't want the fight. Talk about how Manny's people wanted an arena built before agreeing to the fight. Talk about how Manny turned down a $40 million deal. You tell me, when is the black guy, and I'm mentioning race because it matters, when is the black guy allowed to walk away from a failed deal? Right? I show up, I'm ready to fight the other guy, I want drug testing, the other guy doesn't want drug testing. Okay, okay great. Later on, I offer the other guy $40 million to make the fight happen, right? Ask yourself, who in boxing history has made $40 million off a fight? The other guy turns me down. When am I entitled to then say, okay, well, this deal has failed. I'm only in my prime or in, you know, my peak years to box at an elite level for this period of time. When am I able to then turn around and fight other people, such as current champion Amir Khan? When am I allowed to do that? If you believe Stephen A. Smith, I'm never allowed to do that. Right? If you believe Stephen A. Smith, I'm to blame. Not the other guy who's turned down just a simple request for drug testing. For both of us or who's turned down the 40 million dollars that I've offered him unprecedented right that other guy's not to blame no I'm to blame think about it so all I'm saying is this and I understand the subject is edgy and as I said too I mean you know I live in a multiracial world my household's multiracial just food for thought, right? Um, I'm not here saying, hey, you know, everyone's evil and stuff like that. I'm not here saying that. But what I am saying is don't fall into the trap 
of looking around the room and then blaming the black guy without giving the context. If that black guy is the one who agrees to an equal split even when the other guy doesn't have his pay-per-view numbers but wants drug testing, right? A reasonable request, especially in this context, right? Where, you know, there are issues of stamina and people who Pacquiao's own trainer called Shady who were working with Pacquiao, right? Who knows what the truth is? There's a lot of smoke there, but I'll take Freddie Roach's word for it, right? There was a Shady element there, right? So, when the black guy says, hey, you know what? Let's remove any cloud. Let's have bilateral drug testing. And the other guy refuses. Why would any commentator claim that the black guy is not giving fans what they want? Right? When the black guy says, hey, I'll pay $40 million. Just sign the contract. Let's fight. You take care of your promoter. Right? I'll have the money wired to you. And the other fighter decides that's not a deal he's going to accept. Why do we blame the black guy for the rejection? Right? I know there are many black professionals watching this video who know exactly what I'm talking about. Let me point out. You know, I can tell you I've been in scenes where I've been the party. Trying to reach a win-win deal with the other side. Right? I've been treated like the hired help and then incredibly right the other side then starts arguing that I'm the person preventing the deal from taking place you know what I'll prevent that deal from taking place seven days a week if Manny Pacquiao is silly enough to reject a 40 million dollar offer to fight then yeah you're damn right that if I were advising Floyd Mayweather, I'd say, Floyd, go ahead and feed your family. Go ahead and fight other guys, right? Because you've already made an above-market deal. You know, you've already made an above-market offer. If that's rejected, then you can move on just like Manny Pacquiao would have been able to have moved on in his career if he made a $40 million offer to Floyd Mayweather that Floyd rejected. Right? Understand it's Mayweather who has tried to make the fight happen. If the other side doesn't want to make it a win-win, then I'm rooting for Floyd to move on against other world-class competition. That's the way the world works. Stephen A. Smith, as much as I respect him, shouldn't be blaming the black guy in the room when the black guy is the one trying to make the deal. Let me hear from you. I understand there's some strong views. I've touched on this subject before. I understand there's some strong views out there. Go ahead and share those views with all of us in the comment section to this video. Right? Let me say this too. I know I'm going to get some people who say, oh Rich, you're sounding too pro-black, blah, blah, blah. Let me just say this. I use the phrase the black guy because that's how it is, right? We're talking about built-in structural bias, right? I know of no white fighters who have offered an opponent $40 million to fight them, have gotten turned down, and then have had commentators then criticize them for not trying to make fights people want. That doesn't happen to white guys. That happens to black guys. Right? So let's be real here. If you feel the world is different, then let me invite you to point out white guys who have agreed to 50-50 splits even though they have the better pay-per-view numbers, have asked for drug testing, right? 
then had the deal fall apart over a simple drug dealing request, and then were accused by the media of avoiding their opponent. Let's be real, it doesn't happen. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for all of us here in the comment section to this video, and I do hope you stop by gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.